It's the Magical Theory Podcast time. It needs to be a solemn tone. It's Magical, magical Theory. Yeah. How do you do it? Um... Podcast time. <laughs> yeah. So I, that I was, was just you know lower. what I was laughing at? Was what? this said? I, I I knew this was true, but I did. I kind of forgot. It says Magical Theory, a podcast in our uh in our screenshot at the beginning in our title sequence magical theory a podcast i love that <laughs> Wait, so what? much no i love it i don't remember that in the intro yeah yeah it plays every week yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. I... so there's the text and it says magical theory and then it says a podcast and i just i love that decision for us it's so it's so great okay well clearly i pay attention to the intro magical screen. theory a podcast, a podcast. rogue <laughs> one a star wars story <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we do. That's probably why we named it that way. Oh my god! Well, brain. in our Google Drive, it's Magical Theory, a Harry Potter podcast. Yeah, I think I named it that initially on. Oh, I don't know if it's still named that way on our Anchor, um, mm -hmm. where it's audio only. Um, I think that I changed the URL so it's just Magical Theory, Magical Dash Theory. But yeah, that was like early naming. <laughs> no, I love it. It's magnificent. <laughs> Magical Theory. A podcast. It's super I, hot here today. It is so hot. We have a excessive heat warning. Um, it it has been ramping up, so it's been in like the one hundred fives, one hundred sixes again. But it's supposed to be one ten today, I believe, and like yep. one hundred seven the rest of the week. So yep. fun, fun summertime. Yeah, and we're going to Comic Con. We are going to Comic Con. Uh, the reason oh I it, like sprung there was because I was wondering. I don't know what the temperature will be like. But it will no, be it's gonna be nicer because I've been yes. I've been tracking the it weather in San busy. Diego for the last couple of weeks now. Okay. Even though I'm like, oh, it's still a couple of weeks away, but yeah, you it should give be me like much nicer. Even ninety. I mean, we're gonna be inside most of the time. Yeah. Because it's really only what like there are a couple reasons to like go back outside lunch. Yeah. And then probably if a, if a session we want to see is in one of the adjacent Hotels. buildings yeah, yeah so sometimes there's like sessions in a different hotel i think there was one that i bookmarked that was in a different hotel but like part of it is trying to figure out like oh okay we're trying to make this session how long will it take to walk over there talk to us about some of the sessions that we might see some of the sessions we might see um i bookmarked a lot of D and D slash tabletop a lot of D &D sessions yes. um sessions i'm gonna pull up the calendar because i bookmarked a lot when we went in 2018 and 2019 yes we went we saw time. critical role we saw critical both role. years mm -hmm. and it was a really good session we also had fun uh like play in the sessions let's say where it was like we were in that room because later on we wanted to make sure we could get in because there's mm -hmm. no guarantee that you will mm -hmm. and so we just played it safe we easily would have gotten in but we played it safe and just went to the ones before and they were great yes so comic-con is typically talked about with with it's like famous like big movie tv show film star you know movie star type uh celebrity stuff mm -hmm. But it's actually a convention, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of other sessions, and there's a range of different kinds of things. Um, so some of the ones that I've bookmarked are like just general stuff. So like uh, this first one I picked was Comic Con Film School 101 pre-production, and I'm like, yeah, let me learn how to make movies. So there's stuff like Hell that yeah. that's like informative. There's yeah. like also some academic sessions. So like people who study like uh comics and mm -hmm. education or um, there's mental the health potter and harry potter yeah mm -hmm. yeah so dr scarlet ago. actually has multiple sessions uh oh, throughout the event um there's things that are like representation based so disability representation people of color in ttrpg games so some of the people that we've seen on critical role are going to be on there um <laughs> dungeons and dragons honor among thieves which apparently mm -hmm. is a movie i think yeah, sure. coming out uh and i was like okay okay it's like a established phrase uh then we have nickelodeon's rugrats the babies are back so if you were missing rugrats in your life apparently they're coming back so wow. enjoy. is this one we're going to i just bookmarked it <laughs> 
<laughs> I just bookmarked it just in case. I, well, because um, so it's not, the voice actors are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So like the people that voice the Rugrats are going to be there. Right. Um, then there's like autograph signings. There's um, Artist Alley. There's like booths for exhibitors. Yeah, we're going to stop by the WB one. We're, I didn't find the WB one and I forgot yeah, we'll to look. Something. We'll find I mean, someone that, who works at WB. That's freestanding. Like you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's a walk. It's a walk around. I'm sure they'll have something because they have like Gotham Knights and like other games that are that they're promoting actively. Yeah. So they'll probably see stuff. I wonder if they'll have the pinball hall again. Hopefully. Yes. Oh man, Star Wars pinball. That's my <laughs> dream. Is that if we ever had extra money to splurge on anything, I want a Star Wars pinball machine oh, man, so I can just play it. Silent, so when it doesn't freak. Oh out. gosh, yeah. <laughs> He'll hide. Um, yeah, so there are two um, live sessions on Saturday. No, Friday, sorry. Friday is the live sessions. They're both DM'd by Abria Iyengar, who uh, was on Critical Role. She uh, DM'd the uh, Exandria Unlimited uh, sessions. And then she also has DM'd on Dimension 20, apparently the Adventure Zone, and other things. She's like a professional DM and D&D &D player. Um, so she'll be doing two sessions. One is a Wizards of the Coast Legends of the Multiverse, because everyone has a multiverse. So there's that one. And then the one after is something called a Pixel Circus, which is a live stream on Twitch, um, an actual play. So we'll be looking at that stuff. There's also like other things like, oh, how to do gaming on TikTok. And I don't know. I bookmarked them, but we'll see how much energy that I have to go around. Um, then we have, yeah, Critical Role has a Q&A on Saturday. It's not until 5 p.m. So we're that is the thing that we're trying to go to where we're going to be in Ballroom 20. That's where they're going to be at. We're going to be there like the whole time. So there's a lot of... Um, what do you call it? Animated um, TV series stuff. Before so, that. yeah. Uh, remember I told you there was, mm -hmm. um, oh, wait, did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons, American Dad, In 2019, Family Guy. We brought our lunch that day. We did. We packed Probably peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> it worked we great. We did that. It worked great. It did work very well. You know, I was also thinking hmm. the last time we did Comic Con, there was the um, Hogwarts. Uh, foundable event that was like very localized yes. that you recorded yeah because it was pre the first it was like a last day. minute thing yeah. where um Holly alan johnson there. who tom was there is like the influencer relations person director at wb games um he it was yeah me and fodder and oven ready uh oven ready was there slytherwin was there holly was there uh, I think Tom was there. Well, yeah, because they're they like live near there, so they like. Well, I don't mm -hmm. know if at the time they lived there or if it was no, before I think they Holly lived moved. In Vegas, but they were there for maybe other. Things. Well, Tom lived in California. I'm pretty sure. In yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so we had this like event where it was like geo locked in the area behind the convention center, and so we yeah. walked around like by the water. It was really cool. And we just played Wizards Unite. We just did some fortresses, caught some foundable, caught, caught something. What am I talking about? Returned some foundables. <laughs> blended, blended yeah. memory. Yeah, I will uh, try to film. You gonna film some? I would like to film. With I that think camera? that. Yeah, I'm gonna take the camera, and also I need the camera just in case, <laughs> just in case, because knowing my luck, they're gonna like announce some Hogwarts Legacy news, and I'm gonna have to film myself uh -huh. like yes. somewhere. Yeah. I was yes. going to say like at the hotel, but I will literally film myself just like <laughs> on the dock being like, yeah. oh, hey, I'm in San Diego. Guess what? This is news. <laughs> yes. Yes. But for the Critical Role Q&A session, actually, so I did film stuff. Um, I have a series of videos from 2018, and one of them features the Critical Role panel. I didn't have- 18 or 19? It was 18. Huh? I don't have any film from 2019. I'm pretty sure because it was all Wizards Unite stuff. So I don't think I filmed any- else i don't even think we saw them in 2019 i feel like we did all of our scheduling around wizards unite i can't remember it's been you so long you don't think ago. we saw critical Role? I don't no think we saw them two years in a row we did okay yeah. well uh the critical role session will be um put on their youtube afterwards now you're so. making me doubt myself yeah i don't know i, I think know. it was the more <laughs> recent one because it was molly mock so it, it would have molly been mock 2019. Was 2018 Really? Yes, because I went back and I, because I thought it was 2019 and I found the vlog and you said to me, the Molly years, Mock died. It's the same space. Yeah, it's week. hard to disentangle the years for me. It's like, 
it's the same space. So and it's I was like, like oh. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jeff. <laughs> that's fine. All right, well. And now I know who they are, more so. So that's that. That's that. It's hot, but it's we're going to, to Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so today's magical, or sorry, we are magical. We did, did we, we name this? Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy Hogwarts Lore. Hogwarts Legacy Lore. So basically, every week we pull some random Harry Potter thing out of a cup, and then we talk about connections to Hogwarts Legacy, uh, and it's kind of like in a lore format because it's about what it is and possible connections to the game. Speculation, yeah. So uh, we have two things going up. We have a question of the day, if I can highlight it. Uh, what magical plants do you want to see in Hogwarts Legacy? And then we also have a poll that people are voting in. Um, I thought that magical plants and herbology were related somewhat. So sure. how would you rate your magical skills in herbology? And I put OWL scores minus the troll. I don't think we need any trolls in here. Um, but you can go ahead and vote in that poll. Oh, as I voted. Well. <laughs> so the uh, the clues that I gave out, I actually was on time this week on a Monday, Wednesday, thought, Friday yes. schedule. Uh, first clue, plant. Second clue, sentient, which we'll talk about in a second. Yes. And third clue, this was scream. an excellent clue. Yeah. So I was trying to. So it's really whenever I pull for the Hogwarts Legacy lore, I often think about two. Um, two clues immediately and I'm like, that's it. That's all I got. I can't think of a third clue. It's really hard for me to think of three different clues. Um, so then I last weekend when I pulled it, I was like, I'm going to go into like the wiki. I'm going to go into deep dives of mandrakes. And what I saw was that they were identified as sentient. And I was like, Ooh. I know you mentioned that to me. And I'm like, this is, that's, uh. Ooh. they chop them up. Yeah. So let's talk about sentient mandrakes they yeah they get chopped up and put into potions you chop them up you put them into potions they i guess it's not scream any, and kill things so i guess it's not different this, than like we we eat if you do eat animals i don't know but something about it um uh, was like Mm -hmm. off-putting to me where I was like, wait, because the other aspect of it is that they're described as going through puberty. Like, because there are different, the at Hogwarts with herbology class, they use the little baby ones. Yes, which only will knock you out. They knock you out unconscious right. rather than kill you. Right. But then they go through puberty and like there's they're like little... Matures. Yeah, there's like little... um there's little like nuggets about like oh they go have parties and like they have parties they have parties yeah I can't I couldn't uh, find the exact it's a quote rave. yeah it was like they have parties Last one when standing they just scream at each other when they're teenagers they just like become rambunctious and they like throw parties and then there was a debate that I found of people <laughs> saying like are they actually sentient or is it that certain like so this is going to go into like, you know, how do you know that you metaphysics? How do you know? Like, right. is Here it just go. like in response to like um, some sort of stimulus or is it like actively responding as some sort of sentient being? I don't know. So apparently like people were debating well, that says, and I was course, like, I don't know. My favorite Star Trek episode mm, about data, data mm -hmm. and whether or not he is sentient. Yeah. And in that episode, they claim, like, the scientist in the episode claims that there are basically three conditions. Uh -huh. It's intelligence, self-awareness, and consciousness. Yeah. Um, it seems like for mandrakes, like... If they throw parties, they are sentient. Yeah. There's no, there's no like yeah. survival need to just like throw a rager because you're a maybe it's a mating teenager. Call. Okay, that that was another point that somebody brought up is that maybe it's not a party and maybe it's something different. Oh, oh Winnie is sentient. Yeah, Winnie, you have, you, he is you definitely are conscious baby. about you are <laughs> how he is doing. Little hey, Winnie. How you doing? So then I was like thinking about, well, okay, so we previously talked about anime, anima magi, animagus, mm -hmm. um, and to make 
that happen, you take mandrake leaves, well, a mandrake leaf, and you put it in your mouth for like a month. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, well, I don't know. I'm fine with people using leaves of plants, but not like the the root, which seemed to be like the person of the plant, if I could mm -hmm. put it in those terms. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So yeah, that was some, because I learned that mandrakes were labeled as sentient I wanted you to know it as well and have another crisis. <laughs> yeah, it was me. a major commitment. Like once you said that, it was like, this has got to be a clue. Like, oh my God. One, it's either going to be like people are going to be like, well, I thought it might be mandrakes, but yeah, 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 it yeah. must be something else. Or there they're going to be like, oh my God, are too. mandrakes sentient? <laughs> yeah. So the Whomping Willow was also a good guess. Yep. yep. Um, the Scream, that's why I ordered it in that way. It's like, let's start with plant. Let's go with sentient to be like, wait, what? Well, there's something interesting here, right? Because we definitely are quicker i think in general to to personify it right so like because yeah, the mandrake yeah, 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 has yeah. yes like a face and yes. screams yes i think it's easier for me to dismiss the whomping willow oh it's just okay. like oh it's just it's a tree that can move and smash that's interesting what if the but whomping willow had a becomes, face carved that's in. what i'm saying yeah okay like the then you'd be the like great deep Deku like, tree? No, or or the the grandmother willow from Pocahontas. Like mm -hmm. that's that is a face. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah. yeah. I, I know what you're saying. So it's like Yeah. Yeah, this is from Jeshi. So <laughs> it, it's like uh Mandrakes get closer to like trolls because of the face to me in the way my mind yeah, ca yeah. categorizes them. Okay. So like I wasn't the sentience, it, it didn't surprise me somehow. You were like, I was oh, like okay. already yeah. primed to think that. Yeah. But if you were like, oh, the Whomping Willow is sentient, then I would be like, is it conscious? <laughs> you know, like, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that says about me. But so is that's it that what in, when they are like potting or repotting the mandrakes, is it because they're growing bigger and they're just like, oh, okay, so. like this is like any plant, an yeah. exercise that we do? Yeah, transplant it. So apparently um, from, so I put like one link in the description about, uh, it, it's actually a variety of different things. So it's not just about mandrakes, but it's like the most dangerous potions and plants and whatever in the mm -hmm. wizarding world. So um, one of the greatest plants in herbology, that's, the what, mandrake? that's what it's labeled as. Yeah. The mandrake was a crucial ingredient in most antidote treatments. And so that was like mm. discussed also with like, um, Chamber of Secrets with That's the a crucial ingredient to being petrified and recover from petrification, which yeah. not even any spell didn't appear to be able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So antidote stuff like that seems good. So in terms of like utility of like how mandrakes might be useful in Hogwarts Legacy or for you as like a wizard going around doing stuff, maybe for. Even if it's just like, oh, I need the leaf or I don't know what the ingredients are for different potions, but we'll find out, I guess. Um, the So you need earmuffs. Uh, it's really cute in the Lego Harry Potter games uh, when you have you have like a little mandrake. And if you don't, if you are, if your character isn't wearing earmuffs, then like you, you just everyone just billows over in agony, just holding the ears. Um, but if you have the earmuffs, you can use the mandrake to do things like shatter glass that mm. has something that you need. So also, well, we know use... in Hogwarts Legacy that we will have mandrake. Yes, we see it. We do see it. Um, I'm going to put up. I don't know where in the video clip this is, but I do have. I was prepared. This chapter uh, that we're about to talk about later was only like eight pages long. <laughs> so I had some time to cut together yeah. a, a clip. Uh, so in Hogwarts Legacy, oh, so here it is. This is the scene. Right away. Yeah, look at nice. that. Yeah, so we are pulling out. Are those the guys dead? Um, I think they are unconscious. I think they might be dead. I don't think they're dead. Um, they're in the dead. room of requirement, there's also other stuff. So like just transitioning away a little bit. Oh, to plants more generally. Yeah. So yeah. there's um. I'll slow this clip down in a little bit, but I just wanted to kind of highlight. So this is us going into the herbology classroom. Like everything looks pretty cool. Like this classroom, look at it. There's butterflies yeah, and the leaves and everything. They did. They represent the greenhouses really so well. I feel like in the good. movies, there maybe it it doesn't have the sense of proportion. Even in the sixth movie, where 
Slughorn catches Harry, or Harry catches Slughorn. Look at cutting them. I don't think they're dead. I think they're just unconscious. That, the one closest, because... you're right. The other ones go crazy. But the one closest to sparkles. you covers it really well. Okay. There's... He, he seems to be conscious. Though. I was thinking like the sparkles indicated they were just like knocked sleeping. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like little birdies. Well, okay. So let me see. I, I will tell you though. So um, the in that clip, it says in the voiceover, you can even unleash. OK, well, it does say deadly. <laughs> you can unleash <laughs> deadly <laughs> mandrake seedlings. So with the seedlings to me, I was like, oh, they're babies. I mean, it. it's very dark if we're carrying around full grown mandrakes also, and killing. People. We're not covering our ears. So what? what's up uh, with we're that? Mage Magic, we're immune oh to everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can't die. Yeah, so. It's, but it says, okay, I will read the full quote. In the voiceover, it says, you can even unleash deadly mandrake seedlings to incapacitate, incapacitate, incapacitate. is not killing, True. Uh, unsuspecting enemies. I mean, those people were definitely suspecting, but well, I'll they give it to you. To be, like, yeah. <laughs> they were surrounding you. Um, Maybe they were just... I mean, going off of what you said, hmm. can I carry an adult mandrake? Because that seems bad. I don't know. It looks like we can cast Avada. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I it mean, does. It's it's le it's less uh, discriminating than Avada, yeah. which you have to aim. Yeah. So speaking of uh, death with, by Mandrake, um, a by Mandrake. fun fact, band, I guess. New band name, I call it. <laughs> a fun fact is that um, a minister for magic, uh, Venusia Crickerly, Mm -hmm. was minister from 1903 to 1912. Okay. Uh, term ended in 1912 because they died by uh, a freak accident gardening. Accidental mandrake? Yes. Gardening? Gardening. They were growing them? They were wow. gardening. And so here's the thing. Okay. Claw, accident. Claw put something up here. I want to see. Can I, can I go back to oh, this comment? We're blowing this case wide open. Mandrakes are Connie, Constance Pickering. Yes. Uh, favorite plant. All the endless torture and murdering. I could yeah. see it. So yeah, instead, you put something on to just stop them from killing you. Oh my but gosh! Let in enough to drive you insane. So instead of um, whatever she did with her neighbor Sylvia's uh, whatever in the garden, what if she just put a bunch of mandrakes? Here's a question: mm. Is it possible to record a mandrake scream and play it later? <laughs> And like still have the effect, or is it something more magical that it like needs to emanate you know from what? the creature? You know what's interesting? So like the whole thing about like uh, magic and technology don't mix and whatever. Mm -hmm. How did all those people in Wizards Unite record all those magical creatures? Or is it like the act oh, it's of all magic? Faked by Not... Connie. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's all faked by <laughs> Connie. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that. Now we're getting into stuff I I don't I don't understand. Lynette. Also. I just called you Kins. <laughs> Fun fact, D &D number character. two. Um, flesh eating slugs like to eat mandrakes. There you go. There you go. Really? Apparently. I don't Natural know. Natural predator. I don't know. Hmm. Are they made of uh, flesh? <laughs> well, okay. The reason my brain went to this recording the mandrake is because Every once in a while, we'll be driving in the car and have mm -hmm. a song on that has sirens oh in the song. Every person who puts a siren in a song, and so we I like, don't like we, we start looking around and like yeah. slowing down and getting ready to pull over, and then it's, it's like, oh no, it's just in the song. And it's like, oh well, <laughs> pop a mandrake in there. Oh my gosh! Put it on the radio, boom, dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dark Aura Jeffrey over here wants to just avada everyone. I know, I know. Death Give me my alter Jeff. ego. So I'm going to have my normal way of playing Hogwarts Legacy and then I'm going to have my dark way of oh playing. Oh my God. I feel that this is not uncommon. A lot of people Put seem it to... on the radio. Well, I, yeah, okay, not that, but yeah. Not that. Oh, I'm now I'm that. like imagining it. Cause, yeah, well, in. And then are there different like decibels for a uh, baby mandrake? And a big mandrake, so that like, how how does that work? Yeah, but, I don't know. So if it's close enough to you, does it, it kill you? <laughs> if it's like far yeah, enough yeah, away, yeah. it does not. Or is it the pitch? Is it like what is it that distinguishes? Is it literally, is it something that like rides the sound wave and like mm. it's not mature enough? 
some magic that oh, like yeah. rides along it. Do you need to pop. be near it or is it just the sound? Because that would destroy your radio murder spree is if you actually needed so that, that, the that's magic. That's the more essence. interesting yeah. core of what I'm asking is like, is it the mandrake itself oh, or so you is, don't it want the, to just kill is it everyone. the audio? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it feels like it's got to be the mandrake itself, but yeah, it's not clear. <laughs> Your blood, Jeff, has bad plans. Yeah, definitely some bad <laughs> plans today. Um, let's go back to this. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Well, because some of these things, some of these hacks were like, well, if. If this is possible, someone in the wizarding world must have been able to do it, right? <laughs> I don't know. Ask mm -hmm. the um, the screen rant person, the the mm -hmm. me the movie pitch person. Why does this not make sense? Uh, let's go back though. Okay. To just look at some stuff. I'm gonna try. It's beautiful. I'm so excited about that room. Yeah, I'm gonna try to slow this down. So oh, okay. That um, and it shouldn't restart. Is there any audio? Oops. No. Oh no, that's too slow. Go a little faster. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, so we're running to the the classroom. I'm running, I'm running, singing. singing. <laughs> okay, this is slower than I thought, but yeah, I do fourth. like. See, you even even see the butterfly and the leaves out there, outside the room. Here's our herbology uh, teacher. There's Sebastian in the background, just being sus, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why, but look at all of the plants. So many plants. And I'm just like, ooh, mm. look. I like the butterflies. I like the, the little leaves. <laughs> so okay. you know how in the room of required... Oh, go ahead. This right here, I believe, is a Chinese chomping cabbage. Because it's doing the thing where you're using it in battle... And it, uh, we also see a mention of it in the room of requirement that you can like harvest it or plant it to oh, grow with it. The seeds. Yeah, and it just chases or chomps whatever is nearby. Well, I, what I was gonna comment on was how might they use the classes and mm. especially our like kind of asynchronous learning that we'll probably be doing asynchronous. in order to. See, gate that guy's not dead. our ability so i'm thinking like we may have to take a, a series of herbology classes in order to successfully grow say ditney in this ditney. place or mandrake in this place ditney has healing like maybe properties there's like b baseline ones that we can do and then like you have to skill up skill up skill up to be able to do it and then maybe there's skill ups to speed up as well yeah i think so there's also fertilizer if we see in the next shot oh, sure. Um, also, one of the things I was like, oh, are we growing a mandrake and putting it in our pocket? No, I think it's the leaves. <laughs> but um, so here's the shot where we can see. So that's the Chinese chomping cabbage. And then in the character ends up planting venomous tentacula. Yeah. And it says no applicable fertilization inventory. But in the back on the left, when the camera moves a bit, there should be some fertile. Oh, maybe is it going? Is it... it's just so slow. There should be some fertilizer in the background back there. Oh, there it is. There it, there, is. It is. there it is. There it is. So that might be helpful, but it might you might need a particular one. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Or it might speed it up, right? Like it's an optional additive type thing. Yeah, yeah. Not an oh, and maybe you have a stronger fertilizer. Yeah, it's like yeah, know. maybe you add this and or more of it, and so there's that trade off of time and resource, which is really common. Yeah. Do we know who the herbology prof is? Um, I feel like some have people. Have we seen the name? I feel like we did. I some don't people it, say things, and um, but I. It's a Weasley. I there's a lot of speculation out there. I I don't know that. Um, I'm waiting for actual literal confirmation. Do we know any of things. the professor names besides um, Fig? Um, was it were any of them named? I don't. Elias or Fig? Think so, because in the if you have the closed caption, it just says Charms Professor. Um. Okay. Yeah, I don't think because it's that person, the other person, the dark arts or dueling person. Yes, and the charms. Yeah, it just says Charms Professor. Right. I believe. 
Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, 25. I don't do you, know. Do you anticipate us, for example, looting out in the forest uh -huh. seeds? So I we know for sure from the voiceover, and we talked about this last week with the shops, that you can buy seeds for magical plants in Hogsmeade. I don't know about the forest. I would like that or because just that out would and about or just gen, yeah just out a, and about a harvesting of seeds that you then take back yeah to plant i i wouldn't mind that it it makes me wonder like well so in skyrim for example it's like kind of um not so, regional but like on the mountains yeah, you get different sure, kinds of yes. things than yeah. on the I, ground I ex near. if it's in i expect it to be that and not just like uniformly random but but i i also think it's it's an interesting play because if when you're looking at this if it's real time gated uh -huh. like real time 25 minutes then you have to have seeds be extremely rare for them not to essentially be worthless yeah because it's because i mean i guess you can s probably sell them to a vendor i suppose but the idea of like oh if, if it's not that hard to get mandrake mm. seeds then but it takes 25 minutes to grow one. Yeah. Then like once you have 10, it's like this is more mandrake seed than I'm going to need for two weeks. So it would have to, it could yeah. potentially, maybe it'll be really rare or maybe there's ways to speed up the time. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Or it will just be an inventory bloat. It'll be interesting to see how it kind of works together. So you have purchasing stuff straight out. You have room of requirement like growing and stuff what was interesting um i didn't get a screenshot because i wanted to put the screenshot up uh there was something when when your character was uh putting up the the thing i don't know what it was um it had a little bar and it said that you could unlock more whatever things that you can put in there by completing room of requirement missions in where in this let me see if i can find it uh oh let me speed this up too it's not also claw said that uh this was an ingredient in skelligro the cabbage yeah oh, oh i see it oh okay let me see if i nice. well now i'm at like 103 so it's a little faster and also if you can like use the classroom and get some stuff i don't know so we're seeing the chinese chomping cabbages now the mandrake, mandrake release. Oh, look, there's balloons back there. Yeah, that's like the thing we see on <laughs> the, the Quidditch. The broom, yeah. Um, wait, what did I say about this? That there was like something where you could learn and maybe plant more. Oh wait, uh, did oh I you know what I might not have clipped it. Okay. I think it's right before this scene. Okay. There is a thing, and it says like complete more room of requirement missions. I see. And it was like a bar. Right. Um, and I think that the, yeah, so that was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it in there. I forgot that I took it out, mm -hmm. but like, so in my research for different, uh, plants and stuff, like maybe I just need some ingredients on hand, but it wouldn't be as powerful. So like in Skyrim, I can eat a potato, right. uh, but, or an apple, or I can put them things together to make a meal that's like heals yes, me for more. I so like Ditney. So you could just eat a... A Ditney leaf. A Ditney leaf. Like yeah. Ditney has healing properties, but it's probably not as effective as if you so use that, that a potion. So that would be a good way out. You know? Because I was thinking about, you know, essentially anytime you're talking about crafting, you because this happened in Wizards Unite as well, you basically discover over time that there's usually an imbalance on the rarity. Mm -hmm. So one thing of the many ingredients will be the gate. Mm -hmm. Or like... You, you don't have enough of this to move on. Yeah. But with time gated stuff, it's almost always time. Yeah. So unless yeah, yeah, you yeah. have a different outlet for it. Right. I'm not gonna lie. I was very as soon Surprised. as I as soon as I saw the time timer, I was not happy. <laughs> Cause well, I, I don't yeah. typically like timers in games, but hopefully it's done. Well, okay, I remember you know. years ago when I first started getting into MMOs. Yeah. And the first one I've talked about it on this podcast, Dark Age of Camelot, is yeah. that in Camelot. And so there's crafting of armor and stuff and magical stuff. 
and but the, and there was a timer there was a mm-hmm. time bar to to crafting and it could be very long at times yeah and it's it's an interesting way of like in that case affecting the economy yeah but in a single player game it's a different type of a feeling so it'll be interesting I guess- It'll so I play Orna still, and mm-hmm. Orna mm-hmm. has timers for upgrading your equipment. But I also have backup equipment, so it's like not a big deal to me. Is like I just like because sp- I put it down for like time, and then I come back to it later. Yeah, yeah. Um, that might be a little different, knowing that I'm going to be playing for bulk hours at a time mm-hmm. rather than like oh I'll play for like ten minutes and then set it down until my thing is done and then pick it up again yeah. later. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, what other magical plants do you want to see? Me? In Hogwarts Legacy. I can't even name that much. Gillyweed would Gillyweed, be great. Gillyweed, I think, is a must because- If, if we can go in need, water. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, um, that would open up exploring the Black Lake or, you know, I would love to go underwater. I tried to in, uh, Lego or was it? No, Minecraft, Harry Potter swimming, and died. My but... understanding is that swimming in water is extremely labor intensive for programming. Oh, okay. That's yeah. really, really hard to do. Yeah. Nevertheless, some games do do it. Maybe. And the Black Lake would be a candidate for like why you would do it. It yeah. would be bigger than just like, oh, we want people to be able to swim in water. It may actually be like there's dungeons down there and important places. to. Or go. if there's water... Oh, puzzles in a dungeon or something like Mm -hmm. that where you have to do it just temporarily not like oh free roam one one of the games that i played had it had open world uh ships and then obviously swimming as well because your ship could be sunk Mm -hmm. but then there was a dungeon in in the ocean you had to like swim down to oh yeah Yeah. so i did look up anything like that specifically for gillyweed um beaumont Mar- marjorie banks okay marjorie uh, banks. discovered gillyweed really yeah and on their chocolate frog card their like uh oh, dates were like 1742 to 1845 for their life okay. so it Hey-o. definitely exists for hogwarts okay. legacy very nice uh they also were a pioneer of herbology and collected and raised many rare uh and magical flowers, including underwater varieties. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was like, I, I wasn't even going to treasure, even though that's probably what I would want to find down there. Mm-hmm. But if there, there are rare ingredients in game that I was talking about, yeah. that like were underwater, maps. then you Pirates can maps. eat some gillyweed and then go get the rare ingredients down there. But like you're limited by the fact that you need gillyweed. Yeah, I don't know. I, after that, I I don't. I don't actually know that many magical plants or I haven't paid as much attention to it. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't even do a good job of listing the things that we used to use in Wizards Unite. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know. That's why I put that I was acceptable on my airbox. Yeah, I would be things I would do it for the test and then I would forget. I feel like I, yeah, I would be on acceptable on the verge of poor. (laughs) Like, I don't think Agreed. I would do well in herbology. I agree with at you. All. that for myself. Yeah, yeah. We also have, uh, Cindy said, Wigan what tree. That? What is that? Yes. Please tell the class. What What is that? I also that might have so missed cool. some other ones, but those are the two that I see. So if you want to share, what what magical plants? Go ahead and I mean, Dittany. Agreed them. with Dittany. Yeah. Screech snaps. Screech snaps, I think, were the um, the other oh, semi sentient thing. The Wigan tree is the wand. Like, <gasps> wait, wait, I thought bow truckles protected any wand quality tree. Is a Wigan tree a specific one? Its bark protects from dark magic. Okay, so maybe it's like a rare tree. Semi sentient screech snap. Yeah, so some people <laughs> guessed a uh, screech snap for oh. this week's thing because I had the sentient clue. Um, so it also makes noise, <laughs> having the ability to feel both pain and pleasure. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dittany, I think for sure. Even just popping one, like just eat eat a Dittany, tiny tiny heel boost. 
I mean, what was your favorite ingredient from Wizards Unite? Did you have Snowdrop. One? Snowdrop. Okay. <laughs> Snowdrop a million times. Yeah, same. We'll probably see some leaping toadstools. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. I saw one mm -hmm. on the screen for Pippin's potions. I mean What was the red flower with the yellow center? Wasn't there like a red flower? I might be red mixing it up flower. with a different game. Yeah, it just it looked like a flower head to me in in that game. I can't remember. Now I'm thinking of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, snowdrop. Snowdrop. Mm -hmm. In on a on a snowy mountain somewhere, hopefully. Yeah, let or me, in the winter. Let me scale a mountain, please, real fast. <laughs> yeah. The uh, devil snare. Mm. Oh, I did write down devil snare, uh, because so when I was looking up stuff, I would I looked up devil snare because we see it in the trailer. But there apparently also is another magical plant that looks similar called Flitterbloom. And one of them savagely tries to strangle its victims and the other is completely harmless. So um, it's likely that what we see is actually Devil Snare because it Maybe recoils we'll from the light. But it would be funny to like, well, because people uh, apparently, witches and wizards just have uh whatever this other one it was grows in the wild then they just have it in their garden it's just like a, a another plant and they just have it and i was like oh well that seems dangerous it's like if they look similar and then you mistakenly come up and then it grabs mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. devil snare <laughs> oh my gosh uh the wigan tree is a magical ruin that will protect anyone touching its trunk from the attack of dark creatures hmm. well we're gonna be Dealing with some darkness in this game. It'll be under control. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Unless you're the source of it. Unless you're the source of it. That's that's also possible. Well, that was a, a big Are we going to select overview. next week? I, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right. I will repose the question. We're doing it together, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring this one up for the, the wig and weld Potion, uh, that's something you can buy from Pippin's potions. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm. <laughs> uh, I was laughing. I feel like our reaction is probably always the same. It is always the same. I was laughing, oh. though, because um, Hi, buddy. Ariana was like, oh, first Nocturne Alley, and now uh, whatever, we're killing sentient mandrakes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just the theme of hogwarts legacy lore when we made up the list of things it's just all darkness all the time yeah, it's been in this this specific mood yeah <laughs> all right let's get into some goblet well, of fire ready. chapter 32 turn to page 636 yes. flesh blood and bone today's lesson is called rip cedric the chapter begins with Harry and Cedric emerging from the portkey into a graveyard. A figure carrying something enters, and Harry is incapacitated by pain, while a disembodied voice says, kill the spare. An Avada Kedavra spell kills Cedric, and Harry recognizes Wormtail, who ties him up and proceeds to complete a ritual into a large cauldron. It involved a bone from the grave of Tom Riddle, Wormtail's hand, and Harry's blood, but at the end, Lord Voldemort is back. As you mentioned, eight, it was eight pages. like eight pages long. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I don't know. It might have been nine. Oh, speaking of, I have something to show. But is there anything you want? Where do you want to start with this? There's not really anywhere to go. So it, <laughs> it all takes place go. in the same little scenario. We have an Avada Kedavra. Yeah, we do. We See do. The green light. We have this yeah. like full circle back to Wormtail, which makes me sad because so for, you know, we talked about we talked about this a little bit last book. Um, Harry lets Wormtail go. And like there's I mean, the it's just a very brief reaction, but it like hit me because Harry sees. Yeah, he just says you. And I was just like, oh, no, poor Harry. He's just a nice little person. We also see Wormtail's face in disgust. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which I find. Oh, we should take a picture of this and, and <laughs> actually I digitize it on, it. on Discord? Because it's going to be hard to see, I uh, think. Uh, why was Wormtail in disgust? Because 
<laughs> of this evil okay, monster. Okay, first of all, just imagine imagine your image of uh, baby Voldemort. Just think about cute little baby Voldemort in the movie. Apparently, this is what it should look like. <laughs> the stuff of your nightmares, <laughs> baby Voldemort. It's pretty devastating, I yeah. Cannot like that is it the looks disgust. like an evil frog creature, <laughs> a demon. Uh, like yeah, sorry, nightmare warning. Uh, there you go. That's baby Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, it is described quite hairless, gruesomely, and scaly looking. The red, a dark raw, snake like eyes, reddish. Even, no, yeah, no. it has red eyes. Yeah. I, so there was a part in a recent chapter. Um, the one that was probably called the pensive, uh -huh. where Harry tells Dumbledore about his dream, yeah, and they talk briefly about that it seemed like Voldemort was holding a wand. How was that possible? Yeah, and Dumbledore was like, "Yeah, it's tr it's troubling or whatever." Yeah, and so my mind for this chapter was sort of like, "What is that thing?" Yes. So it seems to me like that thing is also what we see at the end of book seven. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Though so, it's described in less yeah. specific details and more just like horrifying. It's a horrifying yes. sight. So, okay. Just now imagine in the movie that shot where they're in like the white King's Cross and you yeah. see that thing. Well, they use the same. It looks very similar to the movie fourth yes. movie Voldemort soul body pre body thing that looks very very similar when yeah. when Wormtail flips it into the cauldron in the movie it's like a more flesh colored little baby little thing and it looks really really similar to okay no baby so, rancor so yeah, yeah picture that yeah 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 okay I tried to look and see did somebody illustrate it um like as it's meant to be in the book I saw I saw some horrific baby Voldemort it's like <laughs> I saw I saw a funny meme that had to do with chicken wings it was kind of disgusting at the same time but like yeah. if you're ever bored and in some like sort of weird mood, mood yeah Go try to look for baby Voldemort pictures on Google Images. Well, it's my horrifying. question is, what is that thing? So it's is a that thing? a seventh of a soul? It is, yeah. So there, oh. I also went down this weird rabbit hole where people were speculating. They were asking, like, where did the body come from? Yes. So Quirrell, he was in Quirrell. Right. Harry did his little psh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... It wasn't until Wormtail found him to be able. Oh, I should have. I, I, I don't have. Oh, maybe I can find it in the old tab. I think it's going to be in the next chapter that Voldemort monologues about. He does being monologue. weaker than weak, and I think that's why I being saved in the it. Albanian forest is because I had something that. Oh no! It's all just stream stuff. I had something, and it was about. The ritual to do, oh, uh, there's a word for it, and I feel like it starts with an R, but there is a ritual that. Um, Reincarnation? No. Okay. Uh, well, I'll continue. I don't know on if I'm going to find Yeah, so keep, keep talking. <laughs> I thought that the. I think we learn that Wormtail was producing a potion. Uh -huh. That Voldemort was taking, and, and part of that potion was something out of Nagini. Yes. So my instinct is that this, what we see here, is essentially like Voldemort within Quirrell's body, except he's outside of Nagini's body. So it's like it's it's using the Horcrux piece from that's inside of Nagini to like manifest a, a sort of corporeal piece. It's called the rudimentary body potion. So it's like the because so the second the spell that we see in the chapter is the thing that makes him like <laughs> his full self. Normal. <laughs> his full yeah. self. Yeah. But yeah, the rudimentary body potion. Because yeah, so in the next chapter, he'll say that he leads Wormtail through a series of things. Yes. specific spells that he created also like it's it's yeah. something yeah. very like oh 
I don't know. But yeah, I think that the thing... It's meant to be. The connection back to the books... Or, yeah, book seven is that I think it's supposed to be the same thing. Like, that's all that's left of him is Well, this, this is like, the fantasy genre at play, right? That we really get a dehumanized evil or a, or a disconnectedness in the yeah. evil. Like, it, it's embodied entirely by Voldemort. Mm-hmm who has been like completely has become an abomination. It's a monster. Yeah. It's not. So I think that of course we can parse the troubling side of that, but it's a pretty typical fantasy device of like you externalize evil in order to externalize the battle that all of us have within ourselves of like the good, the struggle between like, the good and the bad choices that we could make. Yeah. And fantasy is the genre that externalizes that. Yeah. There is a, I don't, I, I, I was debating whether I should share the fan theory because it's a little, it's not a little, it's pretty dark. Um, there is a fan theory that you can look up if you want that has to do with Bertha, Bertha Jorkins as part of the reason why Voldemort's body is so small and having to do with that. Um, but I I also know when I was looking that there's an interview with J.K. Rowling where she said that she described to her editor how she thought that the little Voldemort body came into existence. And it's not something that she was like, oh, I'm not going to share this because it's too disturbing. Like, mm -hmm. it's funny because, like, it kind of, yeah, it kind of glosses over. Like, you you have to give the implication. You have to see it and be like, oh, wow. Like, and think about what is it that's happening? Because you don't necessarily, it, it could just be like, oh, hey, Voldemort's back. But, like, to n actually know, like, Harry is the only one that really sees this. I mean, besides Wormtail. Mm -hmm. And so even when, like, everyone else finds out, hey, Voldemort is back, like, Harry is the one that actually <laughs> sees the disturbingness of it because it's of just, like, what had to be done. The thing that I think I was frustrated by, even though, I mean, this is going back to the Pettigrew thing, is that Peter Pettigrew could have just let Voldemort die. Yes. He could have just let him die and everything would be, you know, it's like you don't have to like serve anyone or do anything. You just like, you can turn into a rat, right? So just like be a rat out in the wilderness and live your life. Do exactly what you just did yeah. with some other family. I, I think it's a really disturbing part of the story is Wormtail. Yeah. I mean, it. Th this man has made choices. Yes. And he can certainly rationalize it. And even Sirius and Lupin rationalize it. It's like you always want powerful friends or you want the protection or whatever. And it's like, yeah, okay. That's just a, that's just a reason. It's not, it doesn't lend any sort of justification yeah. to whether or not Wormtail is doing good things ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I, I, it's really troubling, right? I mean, like it, it seemed, okay, so he's a Gryffindor. So at least could fool the hat, in my opinion. Ooh. But it also, it's a choice. So it yeah, feels like yeah. he chose, he was like, Gryffindor's the most powerful. It will be able to give me the most protection. So he chose Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, he also then chooses to really do some really terrible things. Yeah. I mean, the one that's most questionable is really like this one, I guess. I was going to say turning turning in the location yeah. of Harry and, and James and Lily, but... This is he really could, weird. He was so close. Like, well, he seeks it out. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that you're so close to like just walking away from everything? Like, what? It, I mean, perhaps like the history of it like pulls him back. I don't know, but like this, I feel like this is the Breaking Bad moment. Uh, spoiler alerts, I guess. I don't know. Uh, of like, you can just walk away, just leave, leave it all behind. Like, just go. Well, there certainly seems to be a gulch between like going to Azkaban and then choosing to be to go seek out Voldemort. Yeah. Which is what I said, like, just do the exact same thing. Because mm -hmm. 
the 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 happenstance that allowed Sirius to even deduce that Pettigrew was where he was is not going to happen again. Yeah, <laughs> go live with Muggles. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Go live with Muggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, which comes Dang down it, to Peter. the heart of Pettigrew being making evil choices. Yeah, he has chosen this mm -hmm. for himself, and I never feel any pity for him. Which it means I'm different than Harry. Yeah. But, I, but I'm, yeah, I Harry never is, feel pity for him. It's funny. Harry when he's makes so many different choices. Later on and all this, it's like, yeah. you chose this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the second time around, you already knew what Voldemort was like. It's not like you could have been yeah. hoodwinked. Ooh. You weren't bamboozled. Be like, this guy is evil and he's treating me bad. No yeah. way. Yeah. Right, there you go. Dang it. Yeah. It's a rough episode. It's a rough chapter. <laughs> this is a rough episode. <laughs> it's a rough chapter. Well, yeah. now that I've seen what baby Voldemort actually looks like, I'm That's the cherry oh, on gosh. top, let's say. No. Uh, the cherry on top of the disgusting Sunday. Thank you. Thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> That's Magical Theory Podcast. Tour. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will not be back until sometime in August. We are on vacation mode this week. After tomorrow, Comic -Con. Uh, Comic Con, some other fun stuff, and then we'll be back sometime in August. So uh, you won't find out what I pulled for a few weeks. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can hang out with us on Discord. Um, you can chat with us there or on social media, or just leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, one's ready. ready.